Lives of the prophets. Let's learn from them. Let's learn from them. Lives of the prophets. 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 Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyid al-Anbiya wal Mursaleen. أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله There are many virtues and blessings of reciting salutations upon the best of creation صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم and one which has been stated in the blessed narrations is that an individual who recites the rood 100 times daily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write between his two eyes on the day of judgment that he is free from the fire of hell and hypocrisy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise that individual with the martyrs on the day of judgment. Subhanallah azza wa jal. Such a beautiful blessing and glad tiding for the individual who spends his time in the recitation of salutations. And imagine on the Day of Judgment when everyone is worrying about their, their judgment, everyone is worrying about whether they're going to get the Book of Deeds in the right hand or the left hands. Allah Ta'ala will gather you with those people who are surely forgiven. Allah Ta'ala will, uh, it's as if Allah will stamp you that this person is free from the fire of hell. So to be able to gain these blessings, to be able to be part of these blessed groups, to be able to be those individual who gets the guarantee of entering paradise an individual must unconditionally love the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and one way of loving the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is by means of reciting salutations upon him sallu ala al habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam welcome back to the program lives of the anbiya lives of the prophets alayhim as salatu was salam in which we look at the different aspects of the lives of the Anbiya, in which we look at those things which will strengthen our Iman when we hear about them, and those things which will uh, make us fearful of our uh, hereafter, and make us fearful of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the torments which came to some nations of the Anbiya. And carrying on with the story of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, uh, just to do a quick recap, Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam, he had a dream in which he saw stars, the moon and the sun prostrating to him. And he went to his father Ya'qub alayhi salatu was salam. He said, Oh father, I had a dream in which I saw stars and the moon and the sun prostrating to me. Uh, and the father said that, do not reveal this dream to your brothers as because of the jealousy they might have in their heart, they will try to harm you. And then we talked about how a father's conduct should be with his child. And then the brothers, uh, because they wanted to be closer to their father, Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam had a full brother, which was Sayyidina bin, bin Yamin radiallahu anhu. And all his other brothers were his stepbrothers, they were not his full brothers. And Sayyidina Ya'qub alayhi salatu was salam would prefer Yusuf alayhi salam over the rest of the brothers. And there were a few reasons mentioned. Number one, because his mother passed away at a young age. And number two, there was goodness which was seen from his face. So Sayyidina Ya'qub alayhi salatu was salam would hold him dearer than his other brothers. And this uh, sparked jealousy into the heart of the other brothers and they devoured the plan that we would get rid of Yusuf alayhi salam. But the intention they had behind doing this was that if Yusuf alayhi salam is out of the way, then we would uh, have our father's utmost attention. We would be closer to our father. Our father would love us and hold us dearer than other brothers. And this is why uh, they plotted this plan. One day they come to Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salam and they say that we want to take Yusuf alayhi salam with us. But Sayyidina Yaqub salam used to have immense love for Yusuf salam, and he did not like that Yusuf salam would separate it from him for long periods of times. So they came to him and they mentioned that we're just going to go and we're going to play and we're going to have a good time and we will bring him back to you safe and sound. And uh, uh, they say that there are so many of us, nothing is going to happen to you, uh, your child, nothing is going to happen to our brother. So Sayyidina Yaqub salam places his blessed shirt which was uh, given to him by his father Ishaq alayhi salam which was given to him by his father Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam was given this by Jibreel alayhi salam so this was uh, a very blessed uh, shirt and Sina Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam he placed this over the neck of Yusuf alayhi salam so that it may protect him and like we spoke last time as well that 
Uh, this is where the permissibility of ta'wiz and the permissibility of gaining blessings from the relics of the pious uh, comes from. Now Sayyidina Ya'qub alayhi salam, he sent Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam with his brothers. And the brothers, they mounted him upon their shoulders to give the impression that we love him dearly, we're going to look after him, nothing's going to happen to him. So they had him on his shoulders and they were, they were going and they were going and they had him on his shoulders and they were very cheerful and they were very joyful as long as they were in the sight of Ya'qub alayhi salatu was salam. And when Sayyidina Ya'qub alayhi salatu was watched them disappear in the, in the distance, then uh, they threw Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam on the floor, revealing their inner enmity and hatred. And uh, the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam started one by one revealing their hatred and enmity. And they started to uh, beat him and taunt him and speak ill of him. And when all this was happening, uh, Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam addressed Yahuda, which was his brother, and said, fear Allah and prevent them from transgression. Fear Allah and protect them from doing something majorly wrong. And when he said that, his brother spoke to his other brothers and he said, look, our plan never was to kill Yusuf alayhi salam. Our plan never was to kill our brother, but rather was to just distance him from his father, was rather to just separate him from his father. And, and you promised me that you would not kill him as well. So when this brother spoke some sense into the other brothers, they said, okay, we will not kill him, but we will get rid of him in such a way that uh, he may not be able to come back. So what they did was that they carried him until they found a well. And now when they found the well, they threw him inside the well. And this well had a narrow opening and, uh, and it was wider from the inside. So when Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu was, salam, uh, was there, they tied his hands and feet so he was not able to climb back up and they threw him inside his well. But look at the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his pious bondsmen. That when they threw Yusuf alayhi salam into the well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Jibreel to go and place him softly upon a rock and untie his arms and feet. Subhanallah, that even when you are in the darkest of places, even when you feel like you are alone, but if you have tawakkul ala Allah, if you have your full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause a means for your salvation. Thereafter, when Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam untied Yusuf alayhi salam, he came to him with ilham and sent him a message that, do not grieve, we will take you out of this deep well and grant you an exalted rank, bringing these brothers back to you as needy people and they will live under your command and dear Yusuf, a day will surely come when you will remind them of their cruelty but they will not recognize you as Yusuf due to the great honor and royal authority which will be given to you. Subhanallah, that the person who is upon the truth, that person who is upon the haqq, that person who follows the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sooner or later will elevate him, grant him those things which are promised to the pious people. So after the incident of throwing him into the well, what the brothers done was they took that shirt back from Yusuf alayhi salam and they stained it with the blood of a young goat, but they forgot to tear it. Uh, and then they came to their father at night because they told that if we come to our father at night, then the embarrassment we might have to feel or the interrogation will be uh, easier because there will be the barrier of darkness between us. So they came to his father Yaqub alayhi salam with his blood stained shirt. When they got near the house, they started panicking and crying and creating a scene. So Sayyidina Ya'qub alayhi salatu wasalam rushed out of the house and they asked, Oh my son, what has happened? Did you suffer a loss in your goats? Meaning did a wolf come and eat one of the goats and did you suffer the loss? They said, no, uh, a calamity has fallen us. Upon which Sayyidina Ya'qub said, where is Yusuf? And they said that a wolf came and it ate him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, Oh, our father, we went far ahead racing leaving Yusuf near our goods, the wolf henceforth ate him and he will not believe us in the least though we are truthful. The brother Sur Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam, the stained shirt of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam and Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salatu was salam placed that shirt on his blessed face and he started to cry weeply. He started to cry a lot and he said that it is a very strange and clever wolf that it ate my son without even tearing his shirt apart, without even tearing his clothes. 
So Sayyidina Ya'qub alayhi salatu wasalam had some sort of inclination that what these children were telling me was a lie and in fact something else happened to Yusuf alayhi salam. And look at the logic of Sayyidina Ya'qub alayhi salam that there was a blood stained shirt which was brought to him but his children said that a wolf had ate him. Now it was, was it such a clever and strange wolf that it ate the person by first stripping his shirt off? So Sayyidina Ya'qub alayhi salatu wasalam knew that there was something which was not right. So Sayyidina Ya'qub alayhi salatu wasalam is crying in the uh, separation of his son Yusuf alayhi salam. And Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam is in that well. And some days later, a caravan which was going to Egypt lost its path and uh, it came to the exact place where the well was. So when one of the people reached down with the bucket to take some water out, Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, he grabbed onto the bucket and when he pulled the water out, Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam came out of the well with it. And Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam was there. And when that individual seen him, he said, what a beautiful boy, what a beautiful young man. So he captured Yusuf alayhi salam and he broke him back to his people. And he said, great news I bring. This is a most beautiful boy. They added him amongst with the merchandises and they were going to take him with them. And this part has been mentioned in the glorious Quran as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says translation from Kanzul Iman. And there came a caravan. They therefore sent in their water drawer. He therefore lowered his bucket and he said, Ah, oh, what a pleasant surprise. This is actually a boy. And they hid him as a treasured merchandise. And Allah knows what they do. So that individual, his name was Malik. He was the man who went to the water well to get the water out, but subsequently he brought us in Yusuf alayhi salam. Now the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam would graze their goats in the same area of the wilderness and they also checked on Yusuf alayhi salam. And when they did not find him in the well, they went around and they seen a caravan and they found him with Malik. And they said to him, this is our runaway slave, meaning the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam, when they seen Yusuf alayhi salam along with the caravan, they said that this is our runaway slave. He is of no use and he is disobedient. If you buy him, we will sell him to you cheaply. And we do not want to hear about him. Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, when he heard and seen his brothers, he remained quiet. Uh, he remained quiet that there might not be any more trouble. And he was afraid of his brothers. So they eventually sold him for a very cheap price and it is said that because you know, Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam possessed such beauty that even if they asked for a very high amount traders they were willing to pay such a high amount as well. Malik then brought Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam to the marketplace of Egypt and Egypt was under the rule of Rayyan ibn Walid ibn Nazdan Amliqi at the time who had appointed Qitar, mystery with the authority over the royal treasuries. And the Aziz of Egypt, meaning the Prime Minister of the Emperor, when they seen Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam in the marketplace of Egypt, because Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam was so beautiful, because he possessed such qualities, everyone wanted to buy him, everyone wanted to purchase him. So now the bidding started and uh, the king is bidding, the, the wazir is bidding, the people are bidding and it's got to such a state that the bidding has increased so high that eventually the price of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam is the amount he weighs, he will be weighed in gold, silver, musk and silk and it was the Aziz, it was the, the prime minister of the emperor who paid the specified price bringing Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam home while silencing the other bidders. Subhanallah, this was the, the value, even the worldly value of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam was such that to, if somebody wanted to purchase him at that time, he was weighed in gold and silver and musk and silk and that was what was paid to those merchants. And those merchants bought Sayyidina Yusuf from his brothers for a very low price. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. The Aziz of Egypt took Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam to his residence and advised his wife Zulaikha that host him with honor, provide him with exceptional residence, clothing and food. Perhaps he will be beneficial to us in dealing with the affairs of the government as his face shows sign of wisdom and dignity and maybe we can even adopt him as a son. So Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam was then 
living in the house of the Aziz, living in the house of the king, where he was introduced to the royalties, where he was introduced to Zulaikha, who we will hear about later as well. And through this, Yusuf والسلام, he entered the palace of the king. And inshallah, in the uh, following episodes, we will listen to the story of Sina Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, Zulaikha, and his imprisonment and the matters which led him to be the royal king of Egypt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive any mistakes that have been made. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a portion from the portion of sabr of Yusuf alayhi salam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a portion from the tawakkul of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Ameen. Bijahi nabi al Ameen. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Lives of the prophets, let's learn from them, let's learn from them. Lives of the prophets, lives of the prophets, lives of the prophets, lives of the prophets, lives of the prophets.